in a new world bound by outdated legal models. It's time that we acknowledge that. Thank you. Well, that was Suella Braverman there, speaking in Washington, D.C. There is a heck of a lot to unpack there, so I'm going to do my best to whiz you through it now. She says that Europe and Britain is overwhelmingly attractive to asylum seekers and refugees. 40 million people say that they would currently like to come to Britain as their preferred destination. She went on to say that uncontrolled migration is a bad thing, the nation-state is great, patriotism is good, and that populations cannot grow too quickly because there will be no integration. What she said is that the misguided dogma of multiculturalism is, and I'm quoting now, toxic. She went on to say that there's been more immigration to the UK and Europe in the last 25 years than all the time that went before that. She said it was too much, too quick, and too little thought out on social cohesion and integration. She said a couple of very revealing things. Almost no illegal migrant ends up paying in tax what they've taken from the state. And I think that is a vital thing to get across. Almost no illegal migrant will end up paying in tax what they've taken from the state. So they will never be a net benefit, really, to Britain. She also said that controlling immigration is the democratic thing to do. And here she made a global point. She said people all over the world want governments to control borders. Half of Americans call it an invasion at the southern border. She said 72% of Europeans want the EU to have greater control of its external borders. I'm quoting now. Seeking asylum and seeking better prospects are not the same thing, Braverman said. She was broaching a taboo. If you're fleeing persecution somewhere, you should not be able to seek asylum anywhere. And this is the point about vast ways of the world where it's difficult to be gay or to be a woman. She said that we cannot sustain asylum and asylum system if simply being afraid of persecution qualifies you to it. She says that the global community is too afraid of being called racist or illiberal to change the definition of refugees. And this is where she kind of built on this global sense there, where she said, Britain is really leading the way, I'm paraphrasing it, Britain is leading the way when it comes to the illegal migration bill, which of course would treat anybody who enters this country illegally as being unfit for asylum. The only way to obtain asylum or refugee status in Britain will be via safe and legal routes. She also said that we've got the Rwanda plan. She made a bit of a tongue-in-cheek comment about how many countries initially condemned and opposed the Rwanda plan, but who now, she knows, would wish to copy it if they were allowed to. However, it is the international community and the international definition that is holding that back. And that is the key point that she was trying to make. She went on, as she was concluding, to say, every single country should act in their own best national interests when it comes to border control and border security. And she has called on the world to adopt a new global framework. She is trying there to make a rallying cry to the world. And she finished by saying that we need to admit and acknowledge and crucially do something about the fact that we are living in a new world without dated legal models when it comes to migration, both legal and illegal. Heck of a lot to unpack there. Get your views coming in on that. GBviews at GBnews.com. Is that the kind of statement that you would expect from a Home Secretary putting Britain's interests first? People talk, don't they, about us being world leading. That is a Home Secretary of our country on the world stage issuing a rallying cry to the world. But let's get more reaction now from Suella's big speech. And joining me from Washington, D.C., where that speech was taking place, is Niall Gardner, who's the director of the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation. Thank you very, very much, Nile. Great to have you on the show. Few key points there. Overwhelmingly, what she is calling for is for the world to adopt a new framework to deal and redefine what being a refugee and asylum seeker is, because otherwise, frankly, as she puts it, essentially, it's the end of days. Uh, Patrick, uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me on the show uh, today. Um, I do think the, uh, the Home Secretary's speech was one of the most important speeches, I think, by a British official on U.S. soil in many years. Uh, and, and I think that she conveyed 
absolutely the right uh, the right message, which is that illegal migration is unacceptable. It's a huge global crisis. Action has to be uh, taken. And I think uh, Suella Bregman was absolutely right to address the UN Convention on Refugees uh, from 1951, but also the ECHR uh, as well. Uh, and it is time, I think, for the world's leaders to address the uh, the fundamental threat posed by illegal migration and to act upon it. So it was a call to arms. Uh, mm. I, I do think it was a very robust speech. Uh, it could have been stronger in some in some respects. Okay, go on. Talk to me about that then. Now, so how do you think she should have been stronger? Yeah, I, I think that. Um, I mean, firstly, uh, she should have talked about Britain leaving. Uh, the ECHR, European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, the reality is that the UK cannot yeah. deal with the migrant crisis unless it leaves the ECHR. That is the reality. Now, there's a lot of debate in Cabinet over this. The Prime Minister has not yet adopted that position. Uh, and this is why I think the speech did not go down that particular path. But uh, the UK has to get out of the ECHR. Uh, it is a shackle uh, for the yeah. British people. If the if UK is to be truly sovereign, it has to leave uh, the European Convention. Now, also, of course, she addressed the uh, the UN Refugee Convention. She called for it to be reformed. But the reality is that yeah. uh, reform within the United Nations is virtually impossible. Uh, and and I think that, and, she, and uh, she went on to say now that that really she thought it was impossible for a reason that I think many people will agree with. The international community, as indeed many individuals are are too afraid of being called racist or illiberal in order to deal with a very real problem. And in essence, that they would probably rather sit back and watch the world burn as opposed to actually sticking their head above the parapet and doing something. Yep. And it's on that now that I'll put my final point to you, which is Suella Braverman, I think, has been incredibly brave today, standing up and actually saying a lot of stuff that she knows will other people are too afraid to say. Yeah, absolutely. This is a courageous speech, a brave speech, she said, a lot of tremendous uh, things here that reflect the, the British national interest. Full credit to Suella Braverman for delivering uh, this address. It's an address, of course, that the Biden administration will absolutely hate, yeah. uh, which is all the more reason why this is a good speech yeah. on US soil. Yeah, look, now, thank you very much. Great to have you straight off, hot off the press there of Suella Braverman. It's uh, now Gardner there, the director Point. of the Margaret Thatcher uh, Foundation, uh, which, of course, is uh, in Washington, D.C., where Suella Braverman was.